that's the word. Yeah, it's not a champagne day, we haven't won a trophy. We, we've just, um, I played a team that was desperate to get themselves out of the, st the little that they've been at and, and dump us back in it. But we managed to get there despite everything. What were you feeling when Scott Moore rest over at the end of the uh, It was a telling moment when he came to us a couple of weeks ago and said, I'm way ahead of schedule in my rehab and I want to play. So for two weeks we've been sort of tossing it up, talking with the surgeon who made the obviously the fantastic job that he must have done uh, with his own handiwork, his own skills. It was, uh, yeah, it was one hell of a moment when Scotty saw daylight. He was just telling me there now. All he could think of was he knew it was last play, and we talked about some of our last plays when we've been in front in other games, and how they can, you can kick the ball. Sometimes you give the opposition a chance. So his thinking was, I'm just running to get tackled here. I'm just going to get tackled. <laughs> And he did, but thankfully he was over the line when he did it, which made it a bit of a fairy tale. Really. What does it? Obviously, you've now secured Super League status for next year, but does the hard work start now? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a um, doesn't change anything about we were by far uh, way behind the rest of the teams in Super League in 2015, and for Wakefield. Uh, to celebrate today is is certainly okay because it, it's a better position to start from within than starting from outside the Super League next year. But the job's just pretty much the same, I think. <coughs> it needs a complete rebuild, and, and anyone who takes their eye off the ball in, the, in regard to that after the next couple of days of um, celebrate celebration of relief. I think is is what it is today. Uh, you know that won't happen. I'm pretty sure that uh, there are enough people in this club that, that care that are going to make sure that uh, things will be different in uh, in the very near near future and hopefully over the, the longer term. Have you been back to that, Brian? Do you know yet? I'm not sure yet. No. Uh, do you mean do you mean to just say that the concept is an embarrassment? Sorry? Jimmy Lowe's has said that the whole million pound concept is an embarrassment. Uh, it, what would you say? Yeah, I've tried to refrain uh, throughout this and, and leave it to the people who make the decisions about this and they look at it you know, from a bigger picture. Uh, even though we've won today, and I'm, I'm only surmising, but I think Jimmy might have said the same thing, even if they'd have won today. Uh, it's got knobs on it is what my expression would be. Um, un unless someone could tell me how it, they don't, no one has to answer to me about it, but tell themselves about uh, why it is a good concept and did it generate uh, greater amounts of interest <coughs> than any alternative to it. Um, all I can tell you about is that from within, it is thoroughly debilitating. It's almost impossible to talk about next season. You don't get any opportunity. The other eight clubs that have been involved in it have been able to have a, a running start on us. They're going to get uh, another running start next season because I'm presuming they'll make Wakefield and the other four clubs play an extra round in the, in the uh, Challenge Cup. And until the people, it's, it's really the eight clubs who are involved at the top rather than the four at the bottom, until they realise that whatever advantage they're gaining over that, they're losing massively in terms of having a stronger, healthier competition from day one and throughout any season. It's just logic. It's, it's so much harder for most of the clubs, and certainly ours has been, is one that doesn't have the finances to compete with some of the, guys, the clubs at the top. So it's just, you know, it's, it's a 
It's like going to the Olympics in the 400 and starting at the 450 mark. And that's me carrying the baton, you know, like I could be starting off at 250 and I still wouldn't get there. You know, it's, it's just not, it's just not, <coughs> there's a lot of stuff about it that's got knobs on it. Was a lot of the build up for you mental rather than physical? Because it was jobs on the line for these fellas, wasn't it? <laughs> Lots of people, mate, yeah. The staff and the whole bit. And for them today, all that other stuff that I just talked about is like long term for the good of the game and all that sort of stuff. But in the short term, uh, stuff that went on, I told them after the game, I've never been in a club where a group of guys have had to deal with what these guys have had to deal with in, in that, that uh, four month period that I've been here. You know, we've had guys who quit and went home. We've had, you know, guys have had long term injuries. Uh, we've had guys who've broken discipline and lost their personal discipline and left us to carry the can. You know, we've lost, even within the game today, we've lost Ali Titi, you know, the main man, a, a big player for us potentially. And they, they just kept fronting up for each other. They just kept trying hard. And even when we, we were like, we were so much better than Bradford for long parts of the game. and. Bradford kept themselves in it to some extent and there were some other forces that obviously kept them well and truly in the game and our boys just refused, you know, they just didn't, even when it got back to just two points a difference, they found another, another league and competed hard, so I got nothing but admiration for them, for their character. You boy with players at the very top of the game in the NRL and everything, but is the mental character from some of the lads here the strongest you've ever seen? It was for the level that they're working at. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not going to get carried away with that. They did a they did a fantastic job for our club today and, and for themselves. And I told them, if we get this done, you'll never forget each other. And they got it done. As a club, Brian, it's a very brave stance you mentioned the discipline on that because it would have been easy to sort of get over have. it. Exactly, yeah, but you know, I think I think Wakefield's um, ownership, Michael and, and Chris, uh, to be commended for that. You know, they, they put the game and and the greater good of the club for a, from a longer point of view. Uh, they put that first. Uh, I've got nothing but admiration for them for that taking that stance. And we got.